The PACT Act promises expanded benefits to many veterans who were left out in the past, but the application process can be frustrating and difficult for some. There is help available. Healing America's Heroes, a benefits breakthrough part two, will bring together a panel of experts who can explain how to navigate the claims process and where to go find help. Thank you to the Eunice Joyce Gardner Charitable Foundation for its leadership support of the Health Channel. Welcome to Healing America's Heroes, a benefits breakthrough town hall part two. I'm Olga Villaverde and joining me is Dr. Michael Zinner, CEO and Executive Medical Director of Miami Cancer Institute and Baptist Health Cancer Care. You know, Olga, we covered a lot of information on the last town hall we did on the PACT Act, but there's still much more veterans need to know about it and what it means for them. You are right, Dr. Zinner, and that's our focus tonight. We have a wonderful panel who can shed light on the ins and the outs, so let's introduce them. Montel Williams is a television host and a U.S. Marine and Navy veteran. Melva Rosiera is the senior staff attorney in elder law and supervising attorney of veterans advocacy projects at the Legal Aid Society of Palm Beach County. Michael Figlioli is the director of National Veterans Service for the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Aaron Hoover is a staff attorney at Legal Services of Greater Miami. And finally, James Heaton is the senior director of United Way of Broward County's Mission United. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for having Thank us. You for Thank, Thank you. you. Now, before we begin, I want to remind our viewers that if you have a question for our panel, please email it to us right there to questions at allhealthtv.com. That's questions at allhealthtv.com. Also, if you have a question about your claim or a family member's claim, you can call that number right there on your screen, 1-800-MY-VA-411, or you can go to va.gov slash pact. So, you know, Dr. Zinner, the PACT Act was signed into law last summer, and getting the word out to veterans was truly extremely important. And one of the ways the Veterans Administration did this is through TV ads and social media spots like this one. When I deployed, I didn't realize that even the air we were breathing was dangerous. Veterans like us are now eligible for new VA care and benefits based on when and where we served. Apply today. Visit va.gov slash PACT. Melba, the PACT Act is the largest expansion of veterans' benefits in a generation and could affect benefits of millions of veterans. What's seen is in, what have you seen in your response to the veterans you deal with? Well, unfortunately, um, it's my understanding that there are about 5 million veterans who are eligible for benefits under the PACT Act, and I haven't seen a big increase in veterans coming in for services. So I'm really grateful to be here today to spread the word to increase the number of veterans coming through our doors seeking benefits. And that's why it's so important to do this town hall, Melva. Montel, as a former veteran, do you believe the PACT Act mm -hmm. does enough for our veterans? I mean, are we heading in the right direction? Because I know you're very passionate about this. Montel, I think we're having a problem with your mic or maybe, maybe unmute your computer. I mean, look, I'm so sorry. Look, I think we are having, probably, this is probably one of the biggest expansions of veteran care in the last 20 years. So the program is incredible, but the problem with it is, I'm sorry to say this, but other than you and PBS, there's not a lot of people out there right now echoing and sending out the message to let the veterans know where to go to seek the help they need. Mike, how does submitting a PACT Act uh, claim benefit uh, those that submitted it, and how is it different than the regular benefits, or does it differ from the regular benefits? Yeah, in reality, there is no difference between a PACT Act claim or any other claim for VA disability benefits. Um, the same rules apply. Yeah, I know, however, the PACT Act has expanded eligibility for a number of disabilities that can only be granted before on the direct service connection. Uh, unless you have a favorable medical opinion. Now, with the presumptive uh, expansion of disabilities, it says you were there, you were at that place at that time, you meet those requirements, but it's still subject to the same rules, the same adjudication, and, and the same process as any, any other disability claim. But uh, again, as, as has been said, if you think you 
suffer from Pat that disabilities, please uh, go see somebody and file that claim. Thank you, Mike. You know, Dr. Zinner, the number of veterans applying for PACT Act benefits, especially when they find out about it, and that's what we're talking about, and Melvin Montel said it, we have to create awareness. Uh, it's growing, and more and more are coming in each week. Take a look at these numbers real quick. So far, nearly 700,000 veterans or their survivors have submitted a claim, and over 300,000 claims have been completed by the VA. Aaron, how, how long does it take on average for a claim to either be approved or denied? Well, the VA's goal is to resolve claims within four months. However, you know, the VA has an existing backlog prior to the signing of the PACT Act, and we are going to see a significantly bigger backlog as more and more claims are submitted. So we're going to see the, the timeline for processing claims to extend perhaps six months, seven months, even longer as the backlog grows. So James, let me ask you this, looking at how fast the number of claims are growing, and that's good, is the VA capable of handling all of them? Absolutely, uh, the VA has handled uh, these expansions in the past, and they always seem to find a way to catch up and make sure all of our veterans are getting served. So, Molly, as an expansion of that, in your experience, are veterans aware of the benefits they might be eligible for? And if not, what are some of the important things they need to know now? So, as a whole, the veterans are not aware of the impact of the PACT Act. Uh, what they really need to know is that the number of pre existing conditions has been expanded. The veterans who are eligible now um, has grown. The areas of service have changed and they, they've expanded. And the biggest thing that veterans need to know is even if you've applied before and been denied, we need you to apply again. James, let me go back to you. Are there outreach and education programs available to help veterans learn about the PACT Act and access to health care? That's really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So outside of uh, programs like this on PBS, the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs is doing a huge grassroots campaign across the state of Florida. So they're going community by community, making sure that veterans in those hard to reach places, especially here in Florida, are informed and made aware of the benefits of the PACT Act and also provided an opportunity to apply for those benefits there. Additionally, programs like the United Way's Mission United is out in the communities across Florida and across the country, making sure that veterans understand uh, their benefits under the PACT Act. There's so much information that veterans need to be aware of when applying for these benefits, Olga. There really are, Dr. Zinner. Montel, what do you want to say to veterans out there who may feel like they need these benefits, but they don't have a clue about how to go about it? Well, I think it's programs like this that are going to give them advice of where they can go, numbers that they can reach out to. But it behooves our veterans to understand that these aren't something, this isn't something that the president just gave you. This is something that you earned. And while we live in a time right now where we look at wars and other areas of the world as if it's some sort of a video game, we got to remember that there were precious lives here at home that were lost 10 years ago, five years ago and in places remotely around the world. And those veterans need to step up to the plate and say, look, you know what? It's not like I'll do it tomorrow. If you need a, the help and you know it's out there for you, let's go get it. And let's make sure that we get more stations like PBS to do more specials like this in times when we're not in conflict to see if we can, you know, impact some of the backlog. Absolutely. Thank you, Montel. Could not agree more. Uh, we have a viewer question, and I'd like to get to this one. Gina writes, Dr. Zinner, my husband was denied for the PACT Act. He was in the Gulf War and has many issues. Do we need to get an attorney? Great question there. Yeah, let's let's turn to one of our representatives. Uh, let's go. Melva, can you help us with this one? So um, very glad for the question. You do not need an attorney to file the claims on your behalf. But what you need to make sure is that whoever you're working with to apply for benefits is VA accredited. Ensure that they're not charging you anything up front and that you're not paying for the application because it's free. You can work with your local, le local legal aid offices. You can work with your local VSOs, your VFWs, but ensure that the person you're dealing with is VA accredited.
Okay, thank you. Another viewer question, and we do appreciate these questions from our viewers. This one, Dr. Zinner, is from Wendy, and she writes, I already had a claim, and I was told it will be reopened. The first one I lost now since I had breast cancer, will I win service wow. connected? Well, wow, very important question. Erin, let's uh, see whether you can help us with that one, too. Okay, so thank you so much for your question. Um, the claim is being reopened um, and you do not need to submit new evidence. It is important to note that with the signing of the PACT Act, that is the new evidence that is required for reopening claims. I, we cannot guarantee whether a specific claim is going to be granted or denied because we don't know the facts of your service, where you were, um, the specific uh, presumptive conditions that you are eligible for, based on you know when and where you served. That's, that's what this PACT Act is all about. Where and when you served determines what benefits you are eligible for. But certainly reach out to your local um, veteran service organization, local legal aid attorney, and they would be happy to do an assessment of your case and give you more tailored advice to the facts and circumstances of your service. Great information. Thank you so much, Erin. All right, so let's talk about deadlines, Dr. Zinner. They're really important to keep in mind. Here's what Dr. Sharif El Nahal, the Undersecretary for Health at the Veterans Administration, had to say about deadlines. Take a listen. August 10th of this year is the day where uh, you will no longer be able to backdate your benefits to August of last year when the president signed the bill. So it's another way of saying, please go to our website, va.gov slash pact, and apply for benefits now. The other date to be aware of is September 30th. If you're a post 9-11 veteran who separated from service uh, between 2001 and 2013 and you miss that five-year window where you could essentially automatically qualify for health care within the VA, you now, now have until September 30th to do just that. So Mike, if a veteran in one of the two groups mentioned by Dr. El Nahal has been denied and wants to appeal, do they have to get their appeal in by the deadline as well? Yeah, in short, yes. Uh, I recommend that veterans who have previously been denied for uh, PACT Act conditions uh, in excess of one year submit their supplemental claim to uh, reopen that claim for those conditions by those deadlines. Uh, with that said, uh, in general, veterans have one year after the processing of a claim or the date of a rating decision to file an appeal. So if a veteran uh, had a claim denied after the PACT Act was signed, into law but is uh, not was not yet implemented the veteran has one year from that uh, that denial date to submit their appeal but regardless of any of that we recommend that veterans submit uh, their claims and their appeals as soon as possible uh, we, we know life happens but these are critical deadlines in order to preserve those benefits that uh, has been said veterans and have rightfully earned J james i, I want to stay on the appeals for a second because it's important how easy is it to file one, and what if an appeal is denied? Absolutely. So filing the appeal itself, very easy. Just like everything in the VA, it's a simple form. However, it's the substance of the appeal that gets tricky. So that's where coming in and working with attorneys like those at your local legal aid or working with representatives, VSOs at the local VFW can really come in very handy. So they can help you supplement those appeal forms with the evidence and the, the specific language and verbiage that is needed in order to be successful for an appeal. Now, if you're denied at the appellate level, you have several options. You can take another bite at the apple at the local regional office. You can go up to the Board of Veterans Appeals, which is an administrative uh, court. And then if after the Board of Veterans Appeals, if you're not happy with the decision there, uh, there's another federal court called the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims that can handle uh, the, the final say in, in, that, uh, in that case. Great information, thank you, sir. Another change the PACT Act makes is expanding benefits for survivors of veterans. So here's what Joshua Jacobs, the Undersecretary for Benefits at the Veterans Administration has to say about that. Take a listen. One of the best parts of the PACT Act is it allows VA to provide benefits to survivors of veterans who passed away from one of the conditions covered in the PACT Act during a period of service. And so for anyone who lost a loved one and applied previously, please come back and apply again. Montel, this, this is one area we have not covered. How important to the families of the deceased vet veterans are these benefits? It's incredibly important. I, I visit and travel around the country all the time. And in the last couple of months, I've probably met with 60 veterans, some of whom don't know about the availability of the process of the PACT Act. 
And so it's so important that they know, but then their their surviving, you know, relatives need to know about this too, because you know there are people right now who, and, and unfortunately, as we age as a society, you know, and we're again, wars out of sight, out of mind. You know, a lot of people forget the fact that yes, my husband did serve, and maybe my husband was eligible for some of these benefits, and I deserve those now in his passing. Thank so, you. So, so uh, con continuing on uh, in that, there, there's an area we have not talked about, and that is the national tragedy of uh, homeless vets. And uh, are there eligible, are the veterans eligible for some of the benefits for the homeless vet community? James, and you want to take that for us? Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, there are a bevy of uh, benefits available for veterans who are experiencing homelessness, including housing, including uh, medical services, including VA benefits, uh, such as the ones that we're discussing under the PACT Act. Um, in order to be uh, to get access to those benefits, uh, a veteran who is experiencing homelessness can walk into a VA center, can walk into a VA outreach site, a vet center, um, if there's a local Mission United in your area that is providing these services, like uh, ours in Fort Lauderdale, you can walk into our Veterans Resource Center and connect directly with the VA and get those, uh, those needs addressed. Thank you, sir. Uh, Montel, I want to actually have you chime in on this as well, again, because you're a former veteran. You speak out for them all the time. Your thoughts on this as well with homeless veterans? I got to tell you, that's another area where, again, I'm traveling around the country. I'm doing visits in different areas of the country. And I run into homeless veterans all the time who just don't even know where to begin. And some of them just give up and walk away. And that's why programs like this are so important. And I thank the PBS for stepping up to the plate. But we've got to make this reverberate among all the veterans out there to have them understand your brethren that is suffering on the street, he'll listen to you. So stop by and say to him, look, my friend, there are services available. Whether you believe it or not, there are services available. And we've got to be able to let them know. Thank you, sir. Melva, I have a follow-up question from Gina, and she writes, so should I file another claim form? Your thoughts on this, Melva? It's a little difficult to make an assessment whether she should file a new claim form. I would recommend that she goes to her local VSO, local legal aid, without knowing what she filed the first time, it's a little difficult to make that assessment. Okay, thank you so much, Melvin. All right, <clears throat> now, speaking about helping veterans, unfortunately, there are people and groups out there that claim they can help veterans get benefits, but actually are scamming them, Olga. And I'm so glad we're talking about this, Dr. Zinner. It's an ongoing problem, Melva. What should veterans be on the lookout for when they're contacted by someone who's maybe being very nice, offering to help them, but at the end of the day, they're not? Yes. So we definitely want our veterans to be aware of scams that are out there. The scammers are out via email. They're sending phishing emails trying to find out personal information for our veterans. They're making calls, something the VA does not do. They're not inviting veterans individually to apply for these PACT Act benefits. So be aware of phone calls, emails. Make sure you're dealing with someone who's accredited through the VA. You can look up that information online. Be aware of organizations that are asking you to pay up front or making a guarantee Run. of services. That, that Montel yes. obviously wants to say something. Montel? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to jump in when Melba said that. She of was course. So correct. The VA does not ask for money up front. You should not have to pay for what you deserve, what you Never. have earned. If anybody asks you for a dollar, not only do you run, but then turn around, pick up the phone and said, this person called me from this number and asked me for money. Please, can you shut this down? <laughs> Aaron, you know, as a follow-on to Montel, you work in the community every day. Can you kind of expand even on what you've seen and how this affects the people you deal with? Uh, sure. So I have had veterans come in who have contracted with certain companies who, were, you know, requested money up front um, related to uh, applying for claims, assisting them with obtaining medical opinions. You know, none of this is um, permitted by the VA. In order to assist with claims, the, the person needs to be a 
accredited VA representative. That needs to be an attorney, that needs to be a VSO, people who have undergone training and are permitted to file claims. And so if you have you know, been contacted by someone, if you've signed a contract with someone who is requesting payment and is not um, an accredited representative, you're gonna wanna report them to the Inspector General. Great information. I'm so glad we covered that. Now, many local and county governments also provide help for veterans. We spoke to the manager of veteran services for one Florida county who said sometimes just getting veterans to even apply for benefits is difficult. Take a listen. I had a gentleman that came in and he was a retired officer. So, you know, he, he never thought he needed anything from the VA. And the gentleman had coronary artery disease, diabetes. I mean, he had a laundry list of presumptive conditions and he never thought to apply prostate cancer, hypertension, and he never asked the VA for anything when all these years he could have been easily between 80 and 100% service connected. And so I think the biggest frustration I have is just getting the information out there. How do we reach all these veterans and let them know, you know? And then our younger veterans, they, oh, well, I'm not as bad off as that guy, or I knew someone that passed away, so I don't want to apply to the VA because there's someone else that needs that. And it's hard to get them to understand if you don't use it, then it just goes away. That, that is there for you. You paid for it with your body and your mind, and you are entitled to this. This is such a common theme, Montel. You were just so passionate about it two minutes ago. What would you say to other veterans who don't believe they need or deserve benefits? You got to get that thought out of your head immediately. We, let's remember that less than 1% of this entire nation's population steps up to the line and puts a uniform on their back. But we have a lot of people claiming to be patriots in this country. They're not the people who have served to defend the democracy and the Constitution of the United States that we have and we hold and cherish so much. So you who served, you who have done so much for all of us, we need to repay you. It's not that you're asking for a handout. We don't think that. You're asking for what you earn, what you are due, and what this nation owes you. You know, Montel, let, let's just stick with you for a second. We're, we're getting close to uh, out of time, but we'd like to get thoughts from everybody. Montel, you were so articulate in that last part. What were your final thoughts about how we ought to be thinking about this problem? And Montel, we got about 30 seconds. Okay, we as a nation need to understand that there are things out there right now that can help our veterans in so many different ways. Let's allow those things to come to fruition and start to serve the population that needs it the most. Unfortunately, there are two, you've already talked about it. There are too many organizations out there that are scamming, trying to take advantage of, trying to make money off the backs of those who have protected them and given them this opportunity. It's now time for us to spread the word as loudly mm -hmm. as we can, to as many places as we can to let them know, please, veteran, you earned it, get it. Thank you so much, Montel. Melva, final thoughts, got about 25 seconds for you. I don't think I can top Montel. Um, <laughs> his passion for veterans is, is, is uncanny. We want veterans to reapply. Even if you tried before, try again, and hopefully you'll have a different result. Aaron, we're gonna to turn to you also for some final thoughts on these critical issues. Thank you. Uh, so, I mean, I can't top our other uh, panelists. I just wanted to um, draw us back to the homeless veteran issue. Veterans are such a vulnerable population. They really need assistance. And so veterans who are elderly, homeless, experiencing financial distress or serious mental health conditions should absolutely prioritize submitting their claims and providing evidence of those issues that they are going through mm -hmm. so that their claims can be expedited. Thank you so much. James, let me turn it to you. About 25 seconds for you as well, sir. Absolutely. So first, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here today. And one of the things that the viewers at home can do right now is there are veterans in your life that you know. There are veterans you work with, that you have in your family, that are friends of yours, that are in your community. Go and talk to them. Talk to them about things like the PAC Act. Ask them, are you getting your benefits? And if they say, no, I've never gone to the VA. Ask them why and get them to go to the VA. It's as easy as just walking into a VA facility and mm -hmm. just seeing what you might be eligible for. Thank you, sir. And Mike, 30 seconds. Thank you, and I want to thank my fellow panelists. Uh, again, well articulated from everybody. Uh, one of the things to focus on amongst the other things that everybody else said, veterans, if you haven't filed for yourself, do it for your family.
you're going to get older. Your problems are going to get more exacerbated. Think about your family as well, because there's benefits for them in the future should you pass away from something service connected. Never pay for it. If you don't know how to use the system, go get help, legal aid, VSO, United Way, whomever it might be. Mm -hmm. But please, it's out there. Go get it. Thank you for having me. Great panel, great information. Thank you all for joining us. Dr. Zinner, you're a veteran and you were stationed at Walter Reed during the Vietnam War and you saw men coming in with toxic exposure injuries. I need to ask you your thoughts, your reaction to the PACT Act. First off, Olga, I was proud to serve. And I saw young men suffering from these kinds of exposures. And these brave men, in support of their country, had to wait too long for the support that the PACT Act provides. Now we can help them and their families and appropriately thank them for their service. Absolutely. And before we leave, we want to show you the number to call for information on the PACT Act. Let's show you real quick. It's 1-800-MY-VA-411. That's 1-800-MY-VA-411. Or you can go to va.gov slash PACT. Thank you to our panel of experts, all of you, uh, to Melva, to Montel, to Dr. Zinner, and of course, Mike, for serving in our country. God bless all of you. And on behalf of Dr. Zinner and myself, we thank you so much for joining us. Take care, and we hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you to the Eunice Joyce Gardner Charitable Foundation for its leadership support of the Health Channel.